On the second day of its new term, the Supreme Court heard arguments on a case that could well end up decimating the 1965 voting rights law, a landmark of the civil rights movement already seriously weakened by the conservative majority in 2013. Today's case would permit states like Alabama, with large black populations, to gerrymander congressional districts to limit minority representation. For the second day in a row, the newest justice and the first black woman on the court took an active part in the oral argument. Let's listen. I don't think that the historical record establishes that the founders uh, believed that race neutrality or race blindness was required. Right? They drafted the Civil Rights Act of 1866, which specifically stated that citizens would have the same civil rights as enjoyed by white citizens. That's the point of that act, to make sure that the other citizens, the black citizens, would have the same as the white citizens. So they recognized that there was unequal treatment. With me now, NBC's Yamiche Alcindor and Janae Nelson, President and Director of Council of the Legal Defense Fund. Uh, Janae, first to you, your reaction to what you heard today, because my initial reaction hearing that piece of the oral argument is representation matters. Representation absolutely matters, and I am very encouraged by what I saw at the court today. I saw a number of justices appreciate that very fact and recognize the importance of the Voting Rights Act and the importance of it, the court's own precedent in stating that the Voting Rights Act is a statute that is a remedial statute. It's intended to protect voters who have not always had equal opportunity and equal representation. And I am very proud of the excellent oration from Duell Ross, who is our senior counsel and lead counsel in the case, along with our co-counsel. And the arguments were made quite plainly that this really ought to be a slam dunk case, that this is a, a type of rac racial gerrymandering and vote dilution that we've seen over the decades, that we've seen Alabama do before. And that needs to be uh, completely denounced by this court in a resounding way so that we don't continue to see communities across this country rendered voiceless through a gerrymandering process that is racially discriminatory. Yamish, you've done a deep dive on just how critical this case is. Tell me what you learned from Alabama. Well, Andrea, it is a critical case. It's a landmark case that's dealing with voting rights, race, and gerrymandering. I sat down with the plaintiffs and the defendant in this case. Take a listen to what they told me. For generations, Alabama has been home to seminal civil rights battles. Now, activists say there is a new front line for equality, redistricting. We would ask that federal courts would intervene and, and, and uh, require them to look at the population, to look at the voting history of our state, and to produce maps that actually give black Alabamians a chance to, rep to elect uh, candidates of their choice in a way that actually rep represents their population in the state. Evan Milligan is talking about the marquee U.S. Supreme Court case bearing his name. Merrill v. Milligan. The case centers on voting rights and gerrymandering. Currently, only one of the state's seven congressional districts is majority black. That's 14 percent. Alabama's population is 27 percent black. Milligan and other plaintiffs say the newly drawn congressional map dilutes the voting power of black residents. They are demanding the state create a second majority black district by breaking it up. We had to fight for freedom. We had to fight for the right to vote. And now we're fighting for redistricting. Democracy is under attack. And the country as we know it, if we continue on the road that we're on right now, we will not be able to recognize or even spell democracy in this country. Defendant, Alabama Secretary of State John Merrill, didn't draw the new congressional maps. But he says he is confident the state will be able to successfully defend them. So what, what's your response to um, civil rights activists and voters who say that the current congressional lines are diluting African-American voting power in this state? If they're not pleased with that, then they need to change the constituency of the Alabama legislature or the congressional delegation. And people in our state have the opportunity to choose where they live. They can locate or relocate wherever they, they want to. That's absurd. That's offensive. And that tells you how big the problem is. Former Attorney General Eric Holder has focused much of his attention on fighting gerrymandering. Through a new group, 
the National Democratic Redistricting Committee, he's helped file lawsuits throughout the country over the past few years, including this case in Alabama. It's a microcosm of um, a, a larger problem. Um, you know, gerrymandering negatively impacts the nation as a whole, but disproportionately negatively impacts people of color. This is fundamentally a question of fairness. Now, Evan Milligan, whose ancestors were enslaved just six generations ago, he says losing this case would be devastating for generations. But I should tell you, I just talked to Alabama's attorney general right here, right in front of the steps. He's confident that they were able to make a good case before the Supreme Court. They feel like they can win this case. So we'll have to see what happens. Andrea. Now, Janae, uh, from being inside and listening to the arguments, what was your takeaway as to which way this might be going? Any any? Clue, you've got a supermajority of conservatives on the court, of course. Yes, I, I have to be confident that the law and the facts here will prevail. There's no question that we should win uh, under the Voting Rights Act. It's a very clear cut case of racial discrimination. And this is something that I think the justices can't shy away from. We heard in much of the questioning today that the justices recognize what is at stake, that they recognize that this is a situation where the Voting Rights Act was specifically intended to protect voters. And I am very hopeful. I know that we put on the very best possible case you can to protect the voting rights of black Alabamians and to ensure that our democracy as a whole is based on fair and equitable maps. It's based on a fair and equitable process. And that is not one that governs Alabama's congressional districts and congressional elections today. Janae Nelson, so grateful to you for coming rushing out. And Yamiche Alcinder, as always, great reporting from Alabama. Thank you.